Hi, JP Fournier of The Movie Jerks here, coming to you on day two of Sci-Fi September, the month where I watch a new science fiction film I've never seen every day for the full month. And what do we get for day two? Well, yesterday uh, we had Space Wars. Today we're getting Attack Force, Steven Seagal film? No. Okay, let's see what this one has to offer. Marshall Lawson uh, is the commander of an elite military unit. Marshall Lawson loses his strike team in a cold-blooded and seemingly random attack. And he takes it upon himself to investigate the attack with the help of his girlfriend Tia and his friend Dwayne. Doesn't even sound like a science fiction. Well, um, day two, I am watching Attack Force, a Steven Seagal film. If by chance you end up watching Attack Force, and in a rare incident that you may make it to the end of this film, you may find yourself thinking that this looks like a cheap vampire film. And you would be 100% correct as the original script had Steven Seagal and his band of soldiers battling an invading force of space vampire aliens. However, after the film was completed, the producers demanded to change the script and remove any details about space vampire aliens. Since the film had already been shot, the film needed to be re-edited, and cast members were called back to ADR their dialogue. However, not all cast members came back to re-record their lines. Let me ask you something. What's the story with Majestic and drug movement? And yep, that means our lead actor didn't have the same voice throughout the whole film. Okay, children, let's go. In fact, it changes nearly 50% of the time. I still got a few tricks up my sleeve. What's most baffling about this is that it appears that they never even tried to mask the second voice or to find someone who sounded like Seagal. Well, we will call in when the time is right. I don't know, man. I just needed some time to think. And it's not just the voiceover that's lazy. The film is riddled with technical errors, sloppy and embarrassing lazy action sequences. and a ton of continuity errors. For instance, in this last battle scene, the scar on our main boss villain's chest changes from side to side. Now, as far as terrible Steven Seagal films go, this might be the worst. The plot now focuses on a drug that enhances soldiers' strength, making them into psychotic killers, which shouldn't be a difficult concept to relay. Yet the story is nearly incomprehensible. I'm disappointed. You lied to me. But don't you worry. This film still provides all the classic Steven Seagal tropes you come to expect from him. You get to see him sitting. You get to see body doubles. Seagal or his body double getting creepy with an actor. What are you doing here? I'm following the orders. Just like you. Jaw dropping fight sequences. Oh, and did I mention there's a lot of sitting? And if you mix all these classic Seagal elements together, it still stinks. And there you go, day two of Sci Fi September. This time I watched Attack Force. Let us know what you think are the worst Steven Seagal films out there. And if you're curious about other films we're watching for Sci-Fi September, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And finally, for more information about The Movie Jerks, you can go to www.themoviejerks.ca.